Hello and uh, welcome to the third rail. We have another new addition to the collection this week. I just received this wonderful streamlined BR3.10 in grey livery and I thought we should have a look at it. The enemy of any successful collection is distraction. I'm afraid I've committed the cardinal sin of buying an item which actually does not really belong in the theme I have chosen for my collection. But I like this model, so could not resist and purchased it. This model appeared on the Merklin program in 1992-1993. It can be found on page 40 of the catalogue. Two versions were produced, the 3391, which is my model, which is an analogue version, and the 3791, which is a digital version. The 3391 features the usual technical functions of a 3300 series locomotive. That's uh, electronic reversing, bidirectional lighting, and a factory fitted preparation for a retrofit smoke unit. The model is based on a prototype produced by Krupp Borsig and Kraus Maffei in 1939 for the Deutsche Reichsbahn. As mentioned before, it's a class 03.10, which was assigned to express passenger traffic. The locomotive could pull trains at a speed of up to 140 km per hour. This locomotive was one of a series of different models built as part of the Einheits Locomotiven program of the Deutsche Reichsbahn. At the end of World War I, the independent state railway companies in Germany were merged into a single company called the Deutsche Reichsbahn. The newly formed company found itself in charge of a fleet of 33,000 locomotives across 210 types, having to give away 8,000 of them as part of the war reparation. This situation made the maintenance and operations very complicated and generated unnecessary costs. In order to remedy this situation, it was decided that the new company would only use a few types of locomotives, the designs of which would be centrally managed and distributed to the locomotive industry for production. This would ensure interchangeability of parts, which would make maintenance easier, as well as generate large economies of scale. A committee called the Locomotive Standards Committee was set up to manage this program. It comprised of members of the Deutsche Reichsbahn and all the locomotive manufacturers. As there was no new design available initially, the program took the first step of categorizing the existing fleet and limiting the procurement to a limited series of existing designs. This covered current procurement needs at the time and allowed the committee to start looking at new unified designs. After an initial slow start plagued by numerous emotional technical discussions, the first design became available in 1925. It was the Class 01 or Baureihe 0 Express Passenger Locomotive. As the Reichsbahn had also decided to upgrade their lines to a capacity of 20 ton axle load, the design could only operate on this type of lines. This was also the case for the next design produced by the Bureau, which was the BR44, which uh, is known of all railway enthusiasts as a legendary locomotive. As was the aim of the project, this locomotive contained a lot of parts that were already used in the Class 01. For branch lines and the plains of East Prussia, which did not have such high axle loads, a lighter locomotive was produced, the BR24, which was used as a base for a few other designs as well. 
the procurement level for these three types of locomotives remained quite low. As we know, the 20s were somewhat chaotic from a financial perspective. Germany had to deal with hyperinflation at the beginning of the 20s, had to pay huge war reparations, and the impact of uh, other economic crises in other parts of the world took its toll on the demand for rail transport. Additionally, the infrastructure upgrade planned on the network of the Deutsche Reichsbahn were plagued with delays, which meant that the heavy types of locomotive designed by the Bureau could not be used everywhere. At the end of the decade, it became clear that the situation would not improve, therefore it was decided to design a new version of the BR01, the BR03, with a lighter axle load of 18 tons. This model was produced in somewhat larger numbers. Speed became a topic in the early 30s and the BR03 was used to do a few streamlining experiments. After the successful speed world record attempt uh, made by the BR05 and its subsequent entry in service, some tests were made with a fully streamlined BR03 which also was used as a replacement on the line for the BR05. As the tests with uh, this uh, streamlined version of the BR03 were successful, it was decided to produce streamlined versions of the BR01 and BR03. And in 1937, the design of our prototype, the Baureihe 0310, was finalized and approved for production. At the time, the recently elected National Socialist government had converted the economy to a uh, planned economy, uh, meaning that all resources of the state were allocated based on a four-year economic plan, the focus of which at the time was the rearmament and lighter means of transport. The Deutsche Reichsbahn was not seen as a key industry to support. In 1938, in the winter, a serious transport crisis occurred in Germany following the annexation of Austria and the increase of goods and passenger traffic. The network collapsed. This triggered a change in direction in the economic planning and the next four-year plan included enough resources so that this prototype could finally enter service. Between 1939 and 1941, out of an initial order of 140 units, only 60 were produced. The locomotives remained in service after the war, but in a somewhat changed form to ease maintenance. The streamlining was removed. The locomotives were assigned to the Deutsche Bundesbahn and Deutsche Reichsbahn. They remained in service uh, in West Germany until the mid-60s and in East Germany until the 70s. Right, let's have a look at the uh, model now. Here it is in its box. Everything looks in order. The box is in a very good shape, whatever side you look at. And the inside tray is uh, the right one. Let's slide the uh, tray out now, so you can see the seller added additional newspaper to uh, make sure that the uh, plastic protective tray doesn't get damaged in transit. That's always good. We're going to take the uh, locomotive out now and have a closer look at what's happening inside. Right, packaging wise everything seems to be in order. The protective sleeve is intact, so is the uh, locomotive tray. Perfect. 
Right, let's uh, take the model out. So, we'll uh, move the packaging to the side to have a closer look at the loco. Uh, in the same time, we can see that the uh, paperwork that uh, should come with the locomotive is all present. The uh, spare parts list and the instruction manual and the uh, warranty certificate. Excellent! And here it is, this uh, beautiful locomotive in all its glory. Let's put it on its presentation rail and have a closer look. So, from the side, everything looks in order. There's not one paint defect. You can see the beautiful details placed everywhere on the uh, body of the locomotive. The uh, wheels are in uh, perfect condition. All the valve gear is here, the fake brakes. Yeah, everything is absolutely fine. Moving to the front of the locomotive, the same story continues. No paint defects, details are all there. Absolutely nothing to complain about. Let's look at the other side. Absolutely lovely. Also, no defect whatsoever. All the details are there and the wheels are equally in good shape. Moving to the tender, everything's there. The buffers, the close coupling, the uh, bulbs, all the details are present. Lovely. Let's look at the uh, top of the locomotive. No defect and the undercarriage is in perfect condition. Well, I don't think I can complain. Very happy with my little purchase. Let's have a look at appropriate cars now. In a true Merklin fashion, the year the locomotive was introduced to market, there was no appropriate rolling stock in the catalogue for it. But looking at the Merklin production of around that time, in the uh, 80s, Merklin had produced a few express train passenger coaches, such as the 4141, the 4143 and a luggage car which was the 4142. I happen to have most of these models in the collection and I'm sure they will fit nicely behind this beautiful double 391 which we will see in action in one of the upcoming running sessions. Well, we've reached the end. Thank you uh, very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much also to the uh, few among you who have subscribed to the channel. It's uh, always rewarding to see that people are showing some interest uh, and it keeps me going. Thanks very much. But for now, bye and uh, until next time.